I basically got paid to drive this car. I couldn't believe it. It's like I got away with something. Another morning, another cup of coffee. All right, another day, another commute. Here is the keychain for my new FI exhaust for the BMW. So far on the channel, we have not had a cold start with the new FI exhaust. So here goes. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to discuss the car that's on the thumbnail of this video. I've made a video about it before, it was my Porsche 911 Carrera S Cabriolet. What a gorgeous day for a drive, huh? Should have taken the R8 out today, but uh, I'm hearing there might be some thunderstorms later, so uh, I decided to play it safe. So when I bought my Porsche, it was November of 2020. That was during the depths of the pandemic. At that time, supply chain issues were happening, but uh, you know, there was a lot going on. You know, everybody was staying at home. There was, I would presume, much less demand for cars, at least in the early days. And so that's around the time that I bought my Porsche. It was a floor model, a brand new, uh, spec probably by the dealer, guards red, convertible floor model that had been sitting for months. Now, this is kind of unheard of today, but at that time, that's what the situation was. So I find this floor model and the sticker price with all of the options was $149,000. So for $149,000, you get a brand new Porsche Carrera S Cabriolet with Sport Chrono Package. Certainly expensive, but the car had not been selling, not for months. So I checked it out. I knew right away this car was perfect for me. Exactly the kind of car I needed at that time. So, uh, but I, you know, I took advantage of the situation and I did some negotiation. And what did I buy the car for? Exactly. I negotiated the price down to $135,000. They were eager to get this car sold. People were at that dealership checking out other cars, you know, Panameras and Cayennes. I mean, Cayennes and Macans were, are their main sellers. Not a lot of people buy their sports cars. And, uh, you know, I, I, I took it home that same day. I did make another video where uh, I, I talked a little bit about, uh, about that. I also made another video where I talked about some of the mods I did to that car, which I'm, I'm not going to get into here. But suffice to say, I had a blast with that car. An absolute blast. Porsche 911s, they are the quintessential sports car. I owned that car for about... Uh, a couple months shy of one year and in total I put over 11,000 miles on it and I ultimately decided I wanted to move on to something else I wanted to step up to a supercar something a little bit more exotic uh, a little bit more rare and that's when I found the R8 and I did already talk about that so I won't get into that either but here's the interesting part when the time came for me to trade in my Porsche and to buy the R8, you know, I, I essentially had to pay the difference in price between the trade-in price of the Porsche and the purchase price of the R8. Now, all of my life, I had been used to cars depreciating. I mean, that's just what happens to cars. They always depreciate. Even sports cars, they depreciate, some less than others. Now, 911s among all Porsches tend to depreciate the least. Whereas Panameras and Taycans, I mean, they just take a <whistles> nosedive. I've certainly experienced the uh, 
shock of depreciation on the current car I'm driving, my BMW M850i Grand Coupe, and I did have a video about that as well. But for the Porsche, I was pleasantly surprised. God, what a gorgeous day. So when I spoke to the dealership about my Porsche, gave them, you know, sent them pictures, gave them the VIN number and, and all of those details, they came back to me with a price they're willing to pay for it. And honestly, I was shocked. Here I am, having driven that car, enjoyed it for almost two years, having put over 11,000 miles on it, and the car was not in perfect condition. It was, it was great, but you know, it wasn't brand new. It had a couple nicks and scratches, at least on the interior. But regardless of all that, guess what price they offered me? That is right, $140,000. That is 5,000 more than what I paid for the car. So over the course, of the time frame I owned it and the miles I put on the car, excluding the mods that I did, which were you know voluntary expenses. I basically got paid to drive this car. I couldn't believe it. It's like I got away with something. So the question is, why did this happen? Was I alone? Is this something that happened to a lot of people? Well, based on all I've heard and read, now keep in mind I'm not an economist, you know, I'm not a, uh, not a automotive journalist, I, I'm, a, I'm a doctor, so this is just all I've heard and read and, uh, you know, from the internet and, you know, online forums. No, this did not happen across the board for most cars, but there were some cars that this was happening for, special high demand sports cars and especially internal combustion sports cars. Because again, we had a chip shortage, you know, we had supply chain issues, and then suddenly there was a huge demand for these kinds of cars. I must have got in or bought my car just before that hit. In other words, I'm not gonna lie, I got lucky. I bought just at the right time before, you know, really all of that demand just all just kind of showed up all at once. And by the time I sold my car, it was hard to get cars like the one I had. A lot of people wanted, you know, internal combustion sports cars. Again, there were supply chain issues. There were long waits for, you know, allocations and so on. So I just got in at the right time. I mean, I, so, I sold the car when prices for Porsches, especially brand new, but also used, were just way up. And used car prices across the board were way up. Now, I again, that doesn't mean that anywhere close to more than a tiny mi minority of people experienced what I did, but I just got very lucky. So in a sense, because of the timing of the market, which was something that I had not planned, I got paid. I, in essence, earned money owning that car. It's not often you get paid for doing things that you enjoy. It happens sometimes like making YouTube videos. Of course, I'm not getting paid for these videos, but it's not, it's not a common occurrence. So when it happens, it's sort of the best of uh, a good thing. Is this likely to happen again in my lifetime? I think probably not. You know, we would need to have another worldwide crisis like a pandemic, which I hope never happens again. The pandemic sucked, especially for me. I work in healthcare. Um, and then you'd have to have this, uh, you know, supply issues coupled with, you know, a huge peak in demand. So I, uh, I don't think that's likely. Uh, the only situation where I do, do think that's going to happen is with particularly internal combustion, exotic sports or supercars where, you know, everybody is going towards electrification and, uh, you know, it's going to be harder and harder to find especially high displacement sports cars. So there might be an increased demand for those uh, along with a diminished supply. So, you know, like my Audi R8, for example, uh, they're not making them anymore. And uh, I, you know, I'm planning to hang on to it for, for now. And I, while I don't think it's gone up in value for the time being, because actually they're having a little bit of a hard time selling the, this last couple uh, 2023 models of R8s, 
I do think that if you hang on to this car long enough, it will go up in value. Well, that was my experience making money, owning and driving a beautiful red convertible Porsche 911. I'd like to thank everybody for watching and I'll see you next video.